Hello everyone, I'm Helen Bennett, LLG's Executive Director of Policy and Governance, and I'm joined this week again by the wonderful Dennis Hall, our Bulletin Editor. Hello Dennis. Well, you caught me off the, off the point there. Hello Helen. <laughs> Don't know what to say. I know. <laughs> well, a little bit of flattery to start the week there, Dennis. Doesn't it? Doesn't uh, it? Doesn't very hurt. nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, what, it, what? 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 Let's get back to business. What have you got yes. this week for us to discuss? Well, it's you may not know this, but it's the or some of our listeners may not know this, but it's uh, the start of the devolution revolution. So says Deputy Prime Minister Angela Rayner, and the new government is clear. Top tier councils are central to government plans for economic growth, for rebuilding our economies, uh, our communities, and meeting the urgent need for new housing. Now, Keir Starmer began his premiership, you'll remember, with a meeting of nation leaders and mayors, and combined authorities will have a big part to play in this new drive for national renewal, Helen. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, Angela Rayner made an important uh, announcement. Uh, last Tuesday on this very issue, uh, just before the King's speech, um, incidentally, and she had written to council setting out what the government's missions uh, involve, and she's pledged to kickstart, as you've said, a devolution revolution. I rather like that. Um, I hope it doesn't come back to bite us. Um, in a letter urging county and unitary leaders in so-called um, devolution deserts, that's that's what's that's the phraseology to take uh, on devolved powers. And Angela Rayner encouraged councils to begin discussions with neighboring authorities over new combined or combined county authorities to benefit uh, from having powers over things like transport, adult education and skills, housing and planning, and um, indeed employment support. She said that while the ministry will not force places to adopt a Metro mayor, I'm going to quote from the letter here. It will not shy away from making the case for their huge advantages with some powers continuing to be reserved for institutions with directly elected leaders, such as mayoral combined authorities. And, and she added that um, we as in the government continue to believe that new devolution settlements should be tailored to sensible economic uh, geography so that local leaders can act at the scale needed to effectively deploy their powers and that in the majority of cases that will require local authorities to come together in new combined or combined county authorities so a big push on this Dennis. Mm. And, and this letter that you mentioned this letter to councils comes just a week just a week on from the government meeting with all 12 current metro mayors in Downing Street to announce its intention to what this is to reset its relationship with local government and increase devolution, as you say. Now, interestingly, only around half of the people in England currently live in a region where with a metro mayor, and that's according to ministry figures. Now, at the meeting I mentioned, the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State discussed efforts to establish a council of nations and regions. This is the objective. And this would bring together the Prime Minister, the leader of the devolved administrations, and also the metro mayors. And in her letter to councils, Raina wrote, I want to see more places represented at that council with mm. more mayors at the table. She also said the ministry wants more regions to benefit from integrated settlements with access to mayoralties with capacity, strong accountability, structures and exemplary track records of financial management. And the government is also set to move away from its predecessors much criticised deal-based approach to devolution. That's interesting as well. And instead, the government will set out clear conditions and a clear offer in return for, for places seeking devolution agreements and will enshrine a presumption towards devolution so places can take on new powers automatically if they meet certain conditions. Now, all of this, Helen, is all, mm. all to the good, I think. But did Angela Rayner say anything... Uh, about the huge funding deficits and financial pressures that face councils that we've commented upon many times here. Yeah, well, well actually, yeah, she, she did. The correspondence sent to councils, well, it touched on financial concerns, uh, as well as noting um, uh, that cabinet colleagues uh, and herself understood that all too many councils are facing financial strain um, 
and have been left balancing new obligations with higher costs and obviously interest rates after a decade of financial mismanagement from the centre. And, and, and Angela Rayner um, basically advised the, the councils to rest assured that they will ensure that, that they have resources to, to deliver new devolved powers and functions. So, um, but, but back to the devolution revolution, a, a new devolution framework um, I understand is set to be published, setting out new powers and flexibilities available to councils. Um, in that letter, councils uh, were advised to make sure um, that they, they had proposals in place by the end of September to mm. participate in the first set of devolution settlements. That strikes me as um, a, 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 a pretty um, short time span to lead into that, especially if authorities were at nowhere near the point of actually considering mm. this. And given that we've got the summer holidays, um, it's, a, it, it, it's a swift timetable. And they obviously want to make a, a really quick impact. But obviously, these things need to be considered very carefully uh, and be informed. But uh, Dennis, so on, I mean, on that basis, do we have any early reaction from councils to this um, well, it's a major new initiative, really. Indeed it is, and time is short, as you say. Yes, we've, th there's been some commentary. Councillor Tim Oliver, chairman of the County Councils Network, said, we welcome the announcement that the government will continue with the county combined authority model that helped unlock the devolution logjam. And a new framework must be focused, they say, on expanding the current range of powers on offer to local areas, rather than ripping up the process and starting entirely afresh. Yeah. And he comments, for instance, where a combined authority is not required, the government should continue to devolve powers directly to the county or unitary authority in that area. And Councillor Oliver also noted that the government has confirmed it will be flexible on governance arrangements, which he said was the right approach. And he added, while there are benefits to mayors or directly elected leaders, the reality is that they are unsuitable for some county areas so there's a marker put down there and he says this was shown over the last few years he goes on however all county and unitary authorities are hugely ambitious for their areas mm -hmm. and choosing not to have a mayor should not stymie those ambitions and those places should have as much of a strong voice with the government as those uh, that do have a mayor uh, councillor sam chapman allen chairman of the district councils network said we are eager for district councils to play a central role in driving devolution forward alongside our other local partners. We were pleased, he said, that the new government voted to support giving districts a constituent role in new devolution deals when it was in opposition. So clearly the, the districts are concerned yeah. to be on board as part of these new arrangements going forward. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? And it all feeds into this concept of micro devolution, which I've been talking about mm -hmm. over the last few weeks. So that could be a lot far forward than, than I'd originally anticipated a couple of weeks ago. Very interesting indeed. And of course, as I've said, that September deadline really isn't far away at all. And I'm sure councils will be keen to see what this new devolution framework looks like. I hope I hope we get to see that, you know, quickly. Yes. And of course, when we do, LLG will be there with all the details for, for our members and no doubt. We'll be looking at webinars and, and all sorts, and you and I, Dennis, will pick it up in, the, in in either in the blog or in the podcast. Yep. So definitely. Great. On that note, you can get coverage of many more items from the bulletin and by listening to the Grapevine podcast, which of course is on Spotify. So thanks for joining me, Dennis. It's no goodbye problem. It's good to see you. Me. Good to see you as always. Bye now. Have a good, have a good week. <laughs>